Welcome, my name is Dusty Bodine and I'm a senior at Marquette University. I'm studying mechanical engineering and I'm here to talk a little bit about gear design as used in fractional horsepower electric gear motors. Gear motors are simply electric motors coupled with a gear train so that the motor gear train assembly is one unit. Gear motors have thousands of applications across the globe ranging from medical equipment like kidney dialysis machines and MRI machines to uses in commercial pizza ovens. Before discussing two essential types of gears that will be our focus in this video, worm gears and helical gears, let's review a basic principle of gear trains. Gear trains are sets of meshing gears used to change the speed of an input shaft. Like in bicycle gears, there's an inherent trade-off between speed and torque. If the gears are used to increase the speed, the torque from the input is reduced. Most gears are used to decrease input speed and therefore increase torque. With that as background, there are many choices for the types of gears, the dimensions of gears, and the material chosen for gears used in gear trains. First, let us look at helical gears and why they are used. Helical gear sets are designed so that the thrust force due to the gear and the thrust force due to the pinion are subtractive. This reduces the force that the shaft places on the washers, which allows standard needle bearings to be used rather than thrust bearings. This reduces the overall cost of the gear motor. Worm gears are used in a different manner. They are typically selected for a very high gear reduction ratio in a compact space. They have a trade-off, however, in that they are only about 40% efficient compared to helical gear sets that have an efficiency of 98% per stage. The efficiency is simply calculated by dividing the output power by the input power and power is motor RPM times torque. To obtain more information, I visited the Bodine Electric Company and spoke with Tim Oliver and Liz Matofsky both of whom are experts on gear design. Here's an example of a worm and worm gear combination. The worm is generally always made of steel, which is hardened to RC62 and highly polished on the flanks. So when it is run with a bronze worm gear, which is uh, chosen for its high tensile strength, it has good wear characteristics, once it comes in contact over the initial life of the product. It can flex a little bit under high loading so, so it will conform with the worm. It also has good properties for self-lubricating uh, during the life of the product. Material choice in helical gears is also very important for reasons like noise and load carrying capacity. Here's a little background. Here's an example of a two-stage gear reduction in, in the material selection, which in this case happens to be steel, each one of the stages can be hardened to a different hardness level. So there's always a um, sacrificial steel, which is usually the, the larger diameter, which will be a softer steel or a softer hardness. In this case, this pinion, which is hardened to RC45, Rockwell C45. This one here is not hardened at all and by design it's a fatigue proof which is around RC30. This one here is hardened to RC62 because as you can tell for every rotation of this gear we probably see three or four of this one so this one here sees a lot more action where this hardness here is only RC58. If you're looking for applications that need to be quiet heat treating the gears is not what you want to do. You might want to substitute in a plastic gear in this case, this one here is a nylon 66, which is um, which will be very quiet running with a hardened pinion from the motor itself. One major consideration in the design of any gear set is backlash. This is an example of backlash in a three-stage parallel gear motor. You can see from the movement that the backlash of the output gear is the primary. Um, what contribution to the total backlash. If you're trying to reduce backlash in theory, uh, the preferred method is to increase the tooth thickness or reduce the tolerance primarily on the output stage where the greatest contribution is there contained. When designing gear sets, it's typical to use equation solving programs that can output lots of key information given a few basic parameters. This allows the engineer to run through many iterations of gear combinations to determine the best one. There are also ways to determine the maximum load that a gear can carry before failure. 
It is based on things like material used, size of the gear, and speed characteristics required. Here is how all of this information can quickly and easily be calculated. This is an example of uh, beam strength rating calculations for AGMA 218.01. Our inputs are speed, hours of life required, the efficiency of the gear set, the quality of manufacture of the gear set as defined by the American Gear Manufacturers Association. It asks for some machining uh, constant based on how we machine the uh, lead of the tooth. Our input also is some material constants and our allowable stresses that we had determined experimentally. We also then input the gearing parameters and our output is the torque limit of the pinion teeth and the torque limit of the gear teeth. F beyond this point, it will fail quicker than the 100 hours that we requested. Here are a few examples of failures within the gearbox and gear motor assembly. Okay, this motor was overloaded, the bearing failed, and the shaft was not running parallel, and eventually there was binding in the gear teeth. This presentation was intended to introduce you to several topics in gears and gear motors. There are many designs that were not covered. We encourage you to ask questions and post comments as you think more about gears and their uses. We hope you found this material helpful.